I was going to start with my very first memory of Philip. I remember when my mom was pregnant, and she said to me, Kendra, what do you think we should name him? Well, I'm four and a half, and I'm thinking, Pebbles or Bam Bam? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I remember they brought him home from the hospital, and Mom was sitting in the chair, and we were all gathered around looking at him. And I was like, what's his name? <laughs> <laughs> they said William Pies at Duval Jr. Now I'm going to be honest with you, I was a little mad. <laughs> I remember at four and a half, honest to God. Honest to God. <laughs> I remember thinking, I'm thinking, why did they bother asking me if they weren't going to use it? So I was like, I was really mad. But I got over it and I really enjoyed being a big sister. He, he let me play dress up. He played dress up with me. I used to dress him in girls' clothes and play dress up with him until he was old enough to realize he was a boy. <laughs> let me do that anymore. <laughs> and for many years, most y'all probably will remember, he couldn't pronounce my name. He always called me, Can you in? Can you in? And I say it twice because he was always so excited about something that he wanted to tell me. Or something he wanted to show me. And when he was in first grade, I used to walk into school. I was in sixth grade. I was one of the bigger kids in the school. And so I remember walking over and picking up my, my little brother from first grade and walking him home. And I really felt like a big sister. On Saturdays, well, we didn't have as many TV shows as they do now. But on Saturdays, Billy and I would always watch wrestling. <laughs> remember wrestling? <laughs> and... Um, so afterwards, you know, after you watch it, you got to do it. <laughs> so we'd be in the living room, and that was our ring. And I would get in one corner of the chair on my knees. Because <laughs> I had size on him. <laughs> and then he would come around from where the, the remember the, the wooden stereo we had? Yeah. And he would come from that corner. And we'd walk out and announce ourselves, and I was King Cobra. <laughs> and Billy would come out with his little thing, and he was Tojo Automoto. <laughs> he was, y'all you know, remember, he was the bald wrestler. <laughs> and, uh, and we always walked everywhere, exploring things, nature, walking on the railroad tracks, walking through the woods, always taking the unbeaten paths in, what things we could find and explore. <laughs> He visited me in Virginia Beach, and it was right after he met Letitia, and we were walking on the beach, and he wrote her name in a big heart in the sand for years. And uh, I remember that. He came to visit me in Texas, and Carolyn, he was at your baptism, and everybody loved him. And then um, when we were kids, he would sleep in my room all the time, and he would sleep in the floor, and we would camp out in the dining room together, sleeping in the floor, make little tents. And we would talk ourselves to sleep all the time, you know, talking. Well, he came to visit me in Texas as adults. And we, of all the places in the house he chose to sleep, he slept in my bedroom floor. <laughs> and it was just like when we were kids again. And we would just talk ourselves to sleep, and I just thought, you know, just a moment. And Billy was a great thinker. And I've learned from going to school about grand theories. And Billy was really a grand theorist. His theory is abstract. It's a grand theory. And I told him that. I will miss Billy calling me on his aha moments when he discovered something or thought he figured something out. And I would call him too. I'm like, Billy, why do you think people do this? And we try to analyze and figure it out. And what did this have to do with evolution? Why are we why are we here now? You know, how did this help people get to where we are? And it was always fun talking to him about those things and interesting. And I will miss our long walks. And coming home will never be the same. We will walk all through the town, all through the park. But Billy, I forgive you for taking your life because I had an aha moment watching all your videos on YouTube and the things that people have written to you.
<laughs> and all the lives you touched, people from Australia and England doing tributes to your dad. And I reached over and I took my mom's hand. <laughs> and I said, Mama, Billy has finished what God has sent him to do. It was his time. And Billy, I know when my work is done and I'm laid down next to you in sunfish and my soul goes to heaven, I can just see him up there waiting for me. And he's going to be so, ex we're going to be so excited. He's going to be crittering, crittering. I've got so many things to show you up here. It's so beautiful. And we'll go on long walks and explore just like we did. Rest in peace, my little presents. <laughs> Billy, Billy and I were almost a generation apart, so we weren't quite as close as, as most brothers and sisters. He was 10 years younger than us. But for a time, he came to live with us while he was in college before he got married. And uh, I think he was probably the one that got us started walking around the neighborhood, which was a good thing for us. Um, at the time, we had a, a small dog. Tessa, I think, was maybe three or four years old at the time. I'm not the dog. Yeah. <laughs> we had this dog named Belle. And, uh, and Tessa was quite small. It was her first dog. And Billy would sometimes jog, and the dog would jog along beside him. And he got the idea that the dog was lazy and that he could outrun the dog. So we, we took and put Tessa up along the road a little ways, and Jan was standing her, there with her, and Billy was back with me and the dog, and I said, Billy, you take off when you want to, and I'll let the dog go. Well, the dog was running to Tessa, so you know how it turned out. <laughs> he didn't beat the dog, but, but Billy thought all things were possible. He thought he, did. he could beat that dog, so that, that was just the really funniest thing I could think of. Another occasion, we were talking to him in town, and my son was screaming and crying in the car, and and he just looks in and said, your mother needs to put you in the trunk. Well, my little boy just sits up in the car seat and said, what? You need to go home. I'm not like you. <laughs> and we drive off and my 14-year-old says, was he serious? I said, yeah, he probably was. <laughs> so now when my little boy cries, she says, mama's going to put you in the trunk. <laughs> the feeling was my favorite. <laughs> came to visit me when he was little. I was kind of like a grandmother to him. And then uh, he went away, went to school, and then eventually he came back to Litchfield and made his home with us again. And he started visiting me again. <laughs> About every week or two weeks, in came Billy. And he, you know, stay a little while and visit. And uh, when Davu was there, you know, he would still go over and kind of pat him on the hand as he left. And, give me a little pat on the shoulder. And uh, I love all of you, but I really, really love Billy. <laughs> he was just like... Uh... And every time I walk out on the front porch, look to the right, I see his big blue tent out there in the field back there behind his dad's. About three days before that bad ice storm hit, I seen that tent go flat to the ground, you know, and everything. <laughs> And I seen him come out there after that, and I said, Billy, what happened? I said, I thought you was going to be a survivalist. He said, it got cold back there. <laughs> he said, I'm going to mama's. <laughs> but he was a very sweet and gentle spirit. And I knew him because of my dogs. His walking schedule sort of coincided with all the times I would take my dogs out. So sometimes... Oh, he was probably 8, I was 16. And every time he'd storm, he'd come and sleep by my bed.